China is one of the most powerful countries in the world today. But can you imagine, 40 years ago, this country had a poverty rate of 90%? Poverty and hunger had left the nation in a terrible state. But in the next 30 years, a massive transformation occurred, and this country rose to unimaginable heights. In 1978, China's contribution to the global GDP was just 2%, but today it contributes 18% to the global GDP. Its poverty rate is now less than 1%, and China has become the second largest economy in the world. In many ways, it can be considered a superpower. But how was this possible? What magic happened here? In today's video, let's dive deep into a detailed case study on China. China was emerging from its cultural revolution as one of the world's poorest nations. 1978, Deng Xiaoping had an idea, one that would turn communist China on its head. Since then, China has made extraordinary strides in various fields. So how did one of the world's poorest countries become a global superpower in just... China was emerging from its cultural revolution in 1978 as one of the poorest countries, yet today it has become a global superpower. When we talk about China, it is worth mentioning that the word China is derived from the ancient Qin Dynasty. Around 2000 years ago, the Qin Dynasty ruled China and unified it. That's why we call Chinese people Chini in Hindi, which originates from the word China. Interestingly, the word Chini also refers to refined sugar in Hindi. It's believed that the first time white refined sugar arrived in India, it was brought by a Chinese man. Before that, we used to consume only raw sugar, and because a Chinese man brought it, we started calling it Chini. An interesting fact is that the Chinese refer to their country as Zhongguo, meaning Middle Kingdom, reflecting the belief that China was once the center of the world. Geographically, China is the fourth largest country, sharing a border with India, but its population is mostly concentrated on the fertile east coast, while the west is dominated by the Himalayas and deserts. Until the 19th century, China was a powerful kingdom. However, colonialism brought significant challenges. While the British never fully colonized China like they did India, they exploited it, leading to what the Chinese call the Century of Humiliation, 1839 to 1949. This began when the British East India Company flooded China with opium, resulting in widespread addiction and societal collapse. Consequently, China was forced to sign treaties that ceded land and ports to the British. In 1850, the Taiping Rebellion erupted, claiming millions of lives. By 1894, China fought its first war with Japan over territory during the Qing Dynasty. Between 1937 and 1945, China faced further atrocities at the hands of Japanese colonizers during World War II, with around 30 million Chinese casualties. Amidst the turmoil, there was a glimmer of hope when China, alongside the Allied forces, won World War II, leading to Japan's retreat. However, a civil war soon erupted between the Communist Party and the Nationalist Party, KMT. Although this civil war began in 1927, it was paused during Japan's invasion. It resumed and culminated in 1949 with the Communist Party's victory, forcing the Nationalists to flee to Taiwan. The People's Republic of China was established on the mainland under Mao Zedong's leadership, marking the beginning of modern China. In 1958, Mao launched the Great Leap Forward, a campaign for economic and social transformation, which included land redistribution and the collectivization of agriculture, where the government owned all land. Another focus was industrialization, encouraging people to build small steel furnaces in their backyards to increase local steel production. However, these policies backfired. The steel produced was of low quality and farmers had no incentive due to lack of profit sharing or ownership, causing agricultural productivity to decline. Between 1958 and 1961, grain production fell by 15%, leading to a massive famine that resulted in the deaths of 20 to 40 million people, making it one of the deadliest famines in history. Mao's dictatorial governance, with no checks and balances, led to several disastrous policies. One such policy was the Sparrow Extermination Campaign which ordered the killing of sparrows due to their crop consumption. This caused ecological imbalances, leading to an increase in pests that further damaged crops and worsened food shortages. After these failures, Mao faced criticism but refused to acknowledge his mistakes. In 1966, he launched the Cultural Revolution, primarily to consolidate power and suppress opposition rather than for cultural reform. Students formed the Red Guards, 
targeting intellectuals and party officials, humiliating and sometimes killing those perceived as disloyal to Mao. The country descended into chaos, and cultural heritage sites were destroyed, with an estimated 100,000 to 2 million people dying during the Cultural Revolution. In 1976 Mao Zedong passed away, leaving China in a dire state. However, not everything was negative during Mao's rule. His government made progress in education and women's equality, launching a nationwide public education system and significantly improving literacy rates. Mao's government also passed laws granting women the right to divorce and outlawing arranged and forced marriages. After Mao's death, Deng Xiaoping emerged as China's new leader. Often called the father of modern China, Deng initiated economic reforms that transformed the country. He introduced the household responsibility system, giving farmers more control over their land and allowing them to sell surplus crops for profit. Similar reforms were applied to factories, giving workers and managers more autonomy, which incentivized productivity. Under Deng's leadership, China moved away from strict centralized planning and embraced decentralization. These reforms led to a significant increase in agricultural output, with grain production doubling between the late 1970s and mid-1880s. In 1986, China introduced a compulsory education law, providing free education for nine years to all children. The government also began investing heavily in education and vocational training, laying the foundation for China's technological progress. As a result, China's literacy rate skyrocketed from 65% in 1982 to over 95% by 2010. In comparison, India's literacy rate is still around 77%. China also significantly increased its spending on healthcare, and by 2021, it was spending 5.59% of its GDP on health compared to India's 2.96%. This comprehensive approach to education, healthcare, and economic reform has played a crucial role in lifting millions of Chinese people out of poverty and transforming China into the global superpower it is today. By the 1980s, Deng Xiaoping's reforms had opened up China to the world, leading to what is often called the opening up policy. One of the key features of this policy was the establishment of special economic zones, SEZs, regions where foreign investment was encouraged and businesses enjoyed tax incentives. These SEZs became the engines driving China's rapid industrialization and integration into the global economy. Foreign companies were attracted to China's abundant labor supply, low wages, and improving infrastructure. China, in turn, benefited from the influx of foreign capital, technology, and expertise. This export-driven model allowed China to accumulate vast foreign exchange reserves and invest heavily in infrastructure, including roads, railways, and ports. As a result, the country saw explosive growth, with GDP growing at an average annual rate of nearly 10% for over three decades. Deng Xiaoping famously said, It doesn't matter whether a cat is black or white, as long as it catches mice. This pragmatic approach signaled that China would prioritize economic development over rigid ideological principles. While still governed by the Communist Party, China began to incorporate market-oriented policies, effectively creating a hybrid economic system often referred to as socialism with Chinese characteristics. As China opened up to the world, it became a global manufacturing powerhouse, earning the nickname the world's factory. This title reflects China's dominant role in producing everything from electronics to clothing for export markets worldwide. Cheap labor, efficient supply chains, and massive economies of scale made Chinese-made goods highly competitive on the global market. But China's rise was not just about manufacturing. Starting in the late 1990s and into the 21st century, the country shifted its focus from low-cost manufacturing to higher-value-added industries such as technology, telecommunications, and green energy. The Chinese government invested heavily in research and development, and companies like Huawei, Alibaba, Tencent, and Xiaomi emerged as global tech giants. By 2020, China accounted for over 20% of the world's total R&D spending, and its technological advances in areas such as 5G, artificial intelligence, and electric vehicles were gaining global recognition. China's Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, launched in 2013 by President Xi Jinping, marks another major chapter in its rise as a global power. The BRI is a massive infrastructure project aimed at building roads, railways, ports, and energy pipelines across Asia, Africa, and Europe, effectively reviving the ancient Silk Road. Through the BRI, China seeks to expand its global influence, connect its economy with those of other countries, and secure trade routes for its industries. 
While this initiative has opened up new markets and opportunities for China, it has also drawn criticism from some countries, particularly the US, which views it as a tool for expanding Chinese geopolitical influence. China's economic and technological rise has reshaped the global balance of power. While the United States remains the world's largest economy, China is now the second largest and is expected by many economists to eventually surpass the US in terms of GDP. In fact, China is already the largest trading partner of many countries, including key economies in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. China's military modernization is another aspect of its global ascent. Over the past two decades, China has invested heavily in its military, particularly its navy and air force, as part of its strategy to assert its influence in the Asia-Pacific region. This has led to rising tensions with neighboring countries and the United States, particularly over territorial disputes in the South China Sea and Taiwan. The story of China's transformation is one of remarkable resilience, strategic planning and adaptability. It demonstrates how a nation can rise from the depths of poverty and internal conflict to become an economic and geopolitical superpower. However, China's future is not without challenges. The country faces the task of maintaining sustainable economic growth while addressing environmental issues, managing rising social inequalities, and navigating complex geopolitical dynamics. In conclusion, China's journey over the past 40 years is nothing short of extraordinary. From the dark days of poverty and revolution to its current position as a global leader, China's rise has been one of the most significant events in modern history. Its future trajectory will continue to shape the world in profound ways as it seeks to balance economic growth, technological advancement, and its role in global governance. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our channel, Deep World, for more thought-provoking content. See you soon with another fascinating video.